return of our honorable members to our honorable House of Assembly to deal with the business of our nation. I think you will agree with me that we have returned at a time when our nation is in need of divine intervention in our nation's spiritual, moral affairs more than ever before. We need God's divine intervention against the threatening storms during the remaining hurricane season. Lord, keep safe when and if the storm pass by. The prayer of David in Psalms 85, 1 to 7 ought to be our prayer. You showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. Selah. You set aside all your wrath and healed from your fierce anger. Restore us again, O God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you be angry with us, Father? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Honorable Numbers, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, instruct us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping our leaders and their families in safety during these past summer months, and for returning our honorable leaders to this honorable place to continue the guidance and affairs of our nation. Grant to our honorable speaker and his support staff the wisdom of Solomon to guide our leaders in the way they ought to govern themselves in this honorable House of Assembly in keeping with parliamentary procedures. Grant to our honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Minnis, his cabinet ministers and backbenchers wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to make the right decisions on behalf of your people. We pray for continued unity among them. We pray that you will grant opposition leader, Honorable Philip Davis and opposition members, wisdom to know when it is appropriate for them to oppose and to bring to the table alternative solutions to be considered by the governing party. We pray for our Governor General, Dame Marguerite Finley, and our support staff, wisdom and strength to carry out their duties. We pray for those in authority over us that you will grant to them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to carry out their duties to the honor and glory of God throughout our nation. What can we say to our God, who has been and is so good to us, not some of the time, but all the time, but to say to our God, like David said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy is in dark heaven. Say it with me, honorable members. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy is in dark heaven. Praying together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Father in heaven, thy name, thy kingdom come. This is the day of bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. It is not temptation. Have a wonderful day.
numbers and our guests in the gallery. This morning we are graced with the presence of two groups. The first group is a group from Grand Bahama, the Grand Bahama Hotel Union. Can you please stand for us? That union is headed by President Michel Dossett. Can you wave to us? Other members include Ms. Kemp, the Vice President, uh, Ms. Russell, Mr. It looked like uh, Ms. Brown, and Ms. Dossett. Thank you so much. And we have uh, another group with us this morning. We have a Diamond Queen with us this morning. We have a group headed by Ms. Shawnee Miller-Rebo. I hope I got that right. And on our spouse, can you stand? You, you continue to make us all so proud. Uh, she's joined by her spouse. Michel Uribo. Her father, Sean Miller. Asafa Powell. Jamaican Sprinter. Former world record holder in the 100 meters. Levan Sands, I, 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 I refer to him as the Bionic Man, and Mr. Tim Timothy Munnings. Our, our director of sports. I now wish to extend the opportunity to the Honorable Minister, the, men, the member for Seabreeze. You can have your seat. Who would bring a brief remarks? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, Honorable Members. Mr. Speaker, I always tell people, uh, Prime Minister, continue to blow my mind. Now I see why I've been placed in the Ministry of Youth Sports and culture. From my event there, I've been smiling from air to air. Party over here and party over there. And so I see it's just another realm of exposure and uh, stretching us to new heights and taking us to new depths and, and widths and lengths. And so I want to say on the, uh, on, on, I want to say on that basis, thank you, Honorable Prime Minister for making me use sports and culture. And now, Mr. Speaker, on Monday past, the citizens of the Bahamas were overjoyed to officially welcome home our Michael Jordan, our Usain Bolt, our Tiger Woods, our Serena Williams. Mr. Speaker, today we are graced in the gallery with our track and field superstar, our own Olympic gold medalist, our 2018 IAAF Diamond League champion. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, did I tell the Prime Minister thank you for making me Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture? Mr. Speaker, our 18 to 0 undefeated athlete, Mistress Shanae 
Miller, Bibu. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, and particularly, in particular rather, our Division of Sports, welcomed home with open arms our world record holder, Mr. Shanae Miller Wibu, along with her husband, Michael, and father, Sean Miller, on Monday past. Mrs. Wibu has recently completed a tour of duty, Mr. Speaker, and I wish to report to this honorable house on behalf of the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture that she represented this country to the highest degree. Mr. Speaker, the record reflects she won every individual and every team race, defeating every single competitor and reigning victorious in every single challenge. Mr. Speaker, what is impressive about her character is her ability to remain humble notwithstanding the remarkable achievements. As the cowbells rang, the horns were blown, John Canoe was pounded, the goatskin drums, our flags were waved and the people cheered for our golden girl. I would have told Mrs. Bibu in the presence of those very witnesses that with such an outstanding record, she took our country past the goal. Mr. Speaker, be gone, Platinum. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, moreover, we are simply proud of Ms. Wiswibu's personal accomplishments and of her representation of our country. We are certainly grateful to this amazing athlete for continuing the legacy and foundation laid by her forerunners in the persons of the late Sir Durwood Knowles and Mr. Sloan Fergus Farrington, the first two Olympians, the late Thomas A. Robinson, our first track medalist, Honorable Chanel Ferguson, our colleague, three-time Olympian in sprint and long jump. And Mr. Speaker, who can forget our Golden Girls of 2000, our Golden Knights of 2012, and the outstanding athleticism of Tony Williams Darling, Mark Knowles, Ariane Van der Poel Wallace, and a host of other great athletes. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker has kept our legacy, our renowned reputation as a small island state that produces world acclaimed results. We are proud. We are proud, Mr. Speaker, of her as a daughter of the soil. And as a Bahamian, as for me and the women of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, I and we are certainly proud of her accomplishment as a young woman. Mr. Speaker, creating a warm, festive welcome, Mr. Speaker and her family were graced with the Junkanoo Ensemble, together with the staff of both the Ministries of Youth, Sports and Culture and Education, and members of the press. She was serenaded by surprise musical artist, Mr. Julian Believe, who also presented fresh and beautiful bouquet of flowers by Wildflowers Company. And then we had the famous Mr. Jamal Rowland, a renowned artist who unveiled a stunning portrait of Sinead. Additionally, Marriott Hotels took the opportunity to present Shawnee with a lifetime voucher for accommodations whenever she is home for short stays. Mr. Speaker, for Shawnee's continued outstanding service, to my mind, the best is yet to come. Mr. Speaker, by her side today is her devoted and faithful husband, Mr. Michael Wigo. We also thank him. Also, as the speaker joining Shanae today, we are pleased to acknowledge um, with her the internationally renowned athlete who many of you will also know in the person of Isafa Powell.
Mr. Speaker, I will mention just one or two things about Mr. Powell, but also with her, and I am certainly pleased to have our very own Superman, Levan Sands. Our triple and long jump superstar, Mr. Speaker, and then my director of sports, Mr. Timothy Munnings, also an Olympian. Mr. Speaker, on that backdrop, I dare say that we sit here today among greatness. Mr. Speaker, Isako Powell of Jamaica is a former 100 meter world record holder who ran under the 10 second barrier more than anyone in history. His accomplishment is noteworthy. 97 times to be exact. Isafa has and continues to represent his country with distinction. Isafa's presence today further demonstrates the global impact and respect Shawnee has attracted and we are pleased that he has joined today's session in support of his athletic colleague, Shawnee. We thank you. Mr. Speaker, as Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, proud minister to be exact, I have determined that in this season, many athletes have done virtuously, but Shawnee has excelled them all. It's good to have her back home, and I end by saying to God be the glory, great things he has done. recognizes the honorable member for Cat Island, Rumpke, and San Salvador. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I mean, it's indeed a privilege. Uh, oh, yeah, man. There's no, no doubt about it. I mean, you know, I'm talking, but, uh, you know. <laughs> um, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> you know, it is indeed a privilege us on this side to share this occasion to extend our heartfelt approval to the presence of our standing state. So this is Chanel Miller Vivo. Johnny, 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 Johnny Miller Vivo. I'm very familiar with the family. Not as familiar with her uh, because her grandfather often tells that he was the fastest in the whole family. And let those that Leslie and Leslie uh, fool me about that. So I'd be remiss if I were not to acknowledge her family lineage because her uncle Leslie was also a wanted uh, leader for the a grandfather who was Leslie's brother uh, was uh, off to him as well, but he distracted the other thing, <laughs> to which I will not speak. <laughs> but it is indeed, it is indeed uh, uplifting to the nation that we can all forget those things that divide us all those things that, that bring strife and tension on to this and watch one of us on the world not just this the being the man tells us that the nation is equal to that we are worth that and, and we must believe that we could do it, we could do it, we could do it. I do remember, I think, you know, people who can hear me. So, it's a good thing. I don't know, at Renwood, Hiram, and Jeanette, and Ferris, and what do you think? Bamboo Town. I 
<laughs> That's the Grand Bahama. Box <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he goes, it, it, it's 800 meters. Uh, it's 800 meters. Uh, but it, it does. And you know, what is so interesting is that back in the day, <laughs> we we didn't have no, no, no those who are around in my time will tell you and speak to it but I uh, track and feel was though I was quick <laughs> you know baseball was my was my love um, but what what we have what we had back then the facilities that we played on, the commitment to the game, we loved the game, we loved the sport, but we didn't have the commitment to the sport. That is something that was inspired by those who went ahead and by what we see happening in the world. And so, I, I remember quite, quite vividly um, when we had the first IWM relay in the Bahamas. When we think we won the 200 by I think 200 women, 200 relays. But I think we, we got disqualified. We're running out of the name of But we, how exhilarating it was. But to see our team winning. That was the first one. I think Johnny was, she anchored that way. Right. And so it is these events. Sometimes the value or the investment made does not come back what? in dollars and cents. No, it's not, no, it's not, it doesn't come back in dollars and cents. It, come, it comes back, no. It comes back. It, come, it comes back. It comes back. It comes back. It comes back. It comes back in the joy that a nation could have in seeing our athletes excelling on the world stage. That's that's the that's the dividend. That's the dividend. And I want you to say, right? And so um, I also wish to welcome our Caricom National, the Caribbean man himself, Dr. Power. Yeah, you know, we are in the Caribbean. And when we but well, we are not doing it. We look to the other island. I we put it up the It's great to see um, <coughs> Superman and the final guy. The final guy. And he has made a community of final crowd. And he has not just abandoned because he goes back and gives back to that to which I, I have to enjoy. Or very often times when we arrive, we forget to go to that time. So that now, now you know, I I said if I said <laughs> I, I, I know he's still listening. I know he's still Yeah, 400 people. <laughs> His father was my man. <laughs> I, lo I, I lost the children. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I know my arena. I know my arena. I know my arena. Uh, we also like to welcome. Now uh, we have a we have an adopted son. Uh, he came into our garden and plucked one of our best flowers. <laughs> but you are not to take it anywhere. Make sure you you nurture it, <laughs> you water it. And let it continue to bloom in the Bahamas. Welcome you, Mr. Uh, Lebo. You also want to try 
Ja, ja Paulus. At this time, um, I've received information that we are experiencing slight technical difficulties with our broadcast. Uh, and and, and to, cor to correct that uh, situation, we're going to take a five minutes uh, suspension. Now, now um, Honorable Member for Get Island, I, I am um, informed that everything went out. Everything. <laughs> the, 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 the video was good. We got to do that again. There, there was a little issue with, with the audio in that there was a hum, and they're trying to correct the hum, but but you were audible. Okay. Yeah. I guess, uh, but, but, you know, the member from Angleson, just remind me, I just let me the fact that, um, our diamond team um, has connected to the business that we developed. Uh, and so that gives me more pride. <laughs> 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 I can now beat my chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, she's a cat island woman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, honorable members. Honorable members, as a consequence, the business of this house stands suspended for seven minutes. Honorable members, God is good all the time, and all the time, and I must follow that up by saying, the devil is a liar. And so we are on, back on 
stream with good audio and good video. At this time, we are at the point of communications by the speaker. You know, last night, I attended a service recognizing the day of atonement and repentance at Bahama. And this morning, during my devotion, I turned on the television and there was a live broadcast in Israel where thousands of persons were at the Wailing Wall in celebration of the Day of Atonement and Repentance. The celebration was Yom Kippur. I believe it is appropriate at this time and I intend to make the following communication. First of all, I trust that you had an enjoyable summer recess and have returned to this honorable house to continue the people's business in an open, transparent, and accountable manner. The Bahamian people deserve no less. Honorable members, as we are, we are about to commence this year's summer recess, I had pledged to remain as impartial as is humanly possible, and I intend to keep that promise. This should be the fundamental mindset of every member of parliament. However, the way the Westminster model has been practiced in this country by successive administrations makes it very difficult for any speaker to adhere strictly to the doctrine of impartiality and neutrality. If we are sincere about the development of our democratic institutions, and if we wish all right-thinking Bahamians to take us seriously, we must pay more attention than lip service to the tenants. The Parliament and the Speaker must be given the right amount of independence to bolster the impartiality and neutrality required. Continue to drift further and further in the direction of unilateralism, it will not be long before the governance of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas become one ball of confusion. History is replete with examples of atrocities that have come about when power is concentrated either in one person or in one group of persons. It facilitates greed, corruption, and plunder. It gives you the inner city blues, and it makes you want to holler and throw up both your hands. But this is no time for hollering or throwing up both your hands. This is time to throw down the gauntlet and wage war against systems of oppression and subjugation. Absolute power and dictatorial control. Since the general elections of 2002, it has become obvious that the Bahamian people are searching for something that they have yet to find. It seems very obvious to me that the Bahamas is in transition towards democracy and people's power. The American Declaration of Independence states this, all experience has shown that mankind is disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms which they are accustomed. But those who bear rule in one-sided system soon lose touch, and suffering ceases to be tolerable. The British philosopher Thomas Hobbes, one of the founders of the modern political philosophy, postulated, the condition of man is a condition of war. 
of everyone against everyone. Hobbes is best known for his influential formulation of the contract, the social contract theory. He concluded that men are brutish beasts and that without laws, rules, regulations and procedures, men will encroach upon the territories of other men. It is precisely because of past experiences that certain principles of democracy evolve. We must study this history so as to avoid the tragic mistakes of the past. Over the past decades, dating back to the 80s, when this chair was occupied by the late Sir Clifford Darling, the Bahamas witnessed the most vile encroachment by the executive branch of government into the territory of the legislative branch of government. This encroachment and resultant breach was wrong under the Finland administration, wrong under the Ingram administration, wrong during the Christie administration, and if perpetuated, it will be equally wrong under the Minis administration. By now, you must be wondering if this is a statement of resignation. <laughs> it is. After much soul searching and wide consultation, I am resigned to the fact <laughs> that the speaker must be lonely in his eminence. But despite the isolation, loneliness, and solitary confinement of the office, I accept and surrender to my calling. I want to assure the Prime Minister, Cabinet Ministers, and all members of Parliament that I do not want your jobs. And I doubt that you want mine. <laughs> so this being the case, I give this notice and assurance that as long as I preside in this chair, I will endeavor to do my best to make sure that you do your jobs and only your jobs. I am the presiding officer and I serve at your pleasure. I was elected by a unanimous vote when I entered this chair. Only a few months later, the official opposition withdrew that confidence in me. And now I move on a path where I risk the possibility of others removing their confidence in the speaker. But as long as I'm speaker, I will endorse the current, I will not endorse the current impotency of the parliament. I will discharge my duties in the manner required of me by the constitution and the established rules and practices of the chamber and procedure of Westminster. Honorable members, I published an article in the Nassau Guardian on the 4th of October 1994. The article was captioned, Totalitarianism Guised in Democracy. I commend this article to you, honorable members. And you will see that my views on this matter as a result of many years of analysis, research, and reflection. I did not recently arrive at this stance. Today, as on every other day, I'm expressing my personal conviction. This shall be my contribution to the development of the democratic institutions in the country. And I take my conviction very seriously. Accordingly, the Parliament of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is challenged this day to enact law establishing an independent statutory parliamentary service commission, one with specific administrative and budgetary control for the institution. In so doing, we can avoid the example that we just had here this morning. 
the Bahamas will join, in so doing, numerous member states of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, the CPA, many of whom have already enacted this legislation. I believe in the unity of governance, but one must be able to see the necessity of plurality in the functions of government. Our constitution clearly demarks three basic branches of power. This may surprise honorable members, but the parliament is the first arm of government, and you can check that under section 52, article 52 of the constitution. The executive and judicial branches, while equally important, are born out of this elected body of the parliament. And this is it's as it should be. In this triune arrangement, the other two branches of power carry out their specific functions as Parliament carries out its functions and are intended to bring about success and responsible governance. Westminster model is designed for success. I am reminded of a story in the Old Testament. Jethro gave some very interesting advice to his son-in-law Moses with respect to the separation and delegation of powers. I refer to it as the Jethro principle. English law was based on biblical principles. The British had major success from Bible principles and the people ought to read the Bible after all, the preamble of our Constitution establishes our nation on these same spiritual principles. No one of these three branches of power should ever encroach on the domain of any of the other two branches. This is unacceptable in the modern Bahamas. It is time beyond to move beyond this. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas deserves better. The funeral of the late Chief Justice Stephen Isaacs was a very sad occasion for me. However, there were moments when I felt a joy that almost made me completely forget that I was attending a funeral. I must commend both Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Hubert A. Minnis, and the Venerable Bishop Drexel Gomez for their wonderful speech and sermon made in eulogizing the late Chief Justice. The Prime Minister's speech was sound in his tenets. I'm sure, as a result, the Prime Minister would not object to my quoting from his speech, which contains some profound utterances. On democracy, the Prime Minister said this, there is no genuine democracy without the rule of law. There is no genuine democracy without an unyielding respect for basic rights and freedoms. There is no genuine democracy without equal treat of all citizens before the law. The Prime Minister is absolutely correct. And I would add this. Westminster's system of democracy was designed for checks and balances. Each branch of power has its role to play in checking the other two branches. On the separation of powers, the Prime Minister said, and I quote, our democratic system is built on three pillars, the legislative, executive, and judicial branches, which are necessary, necessarily connected, but have separate and independent functions. Each branch has a role in promoting and safeguarding the rule of law and the dignity of human person through adherence to the rights and freedoms of the individual. Honorable members, the Prime Minister is absolutely correct. He obviously understands the system of governance under which we, he operates as chief executive. And so, Mr. Prime Minister, in future appointments of members of the executive, 
please ensure that there are sufficient backbenches remaining so as to allow the parliament to hold the government to account. With the exception of the rule, the House Rules and Business Committee, no member of the cabinet should serve on any of the various parliamentary committees and the cabinet should divest itself of parliamentary functions, administrative or otherwise. This will lend itself to greater efficiency and the equality of treatment of all members of the institution. It will also bring about greater transparency and accountability. On the civil creed of a nation, the Prime Minister concluded, a true and vibrant civil creed resides in the temperament and spirit, the disposition and in the hearts and minds of those who adjudicate the law. The occasion did not lend itself to an elaboration on this point. So the Prime Minister rightfully stopped where he did. But it is obvious to me from the proposed motions that we have coming before this House that he wishes to remedy the wrongs that exist in the Bahamas, particularly as we practice this Westminster model. Perhaps the best place to start is the total separation of the legislative branch from the executive branch. It is common knowledge that the continuing encroachment of the executive into the parliament has effectively rendered the legislature impotent in its role as a check on the executive as envisioned by Article 72 of the Constitution. Constitutionally, the executive branch has general direction and control of the government. It is clear that this control was never intended to be absolute. While there exists a degree of fusion between the executive and legislative branches in both the Senate and the House of Assembly, the executive branch should have no specific role or function in the micromanagement of the day-to-day -day administrative and budgetary functions of the parliament. On the contrary, the doctrine of the separation of powers and conventions of the Westminster model of government forbids such overreaching by any of the three branches into the sphere and influence of any of the other two branches and deems any such action ultra-virus and absolute and abuse of power. In this vein, Bishop Gomez, in his sermon during the funeral service for the late Chief Justice, called for inclusion of all citizens to full participation in the affairs of state. If we are to maximize our potential and advance as a unified nation, this inclusive participation of our citizens will exercise through their it should be exercised through their representatives in Parliament. For decades now, this is not an indictment on the present government or executive, but for decades now, perhaps through lack of understanding, the executive has violated the spirit of Article 72 of the Constitution, which states, Article 72, subsection 1, there shall be a cabinet for the Bahamas which shall have the general direction and control of the government of the Bahamas and shall be collectively responsible thereof the parliament. Article 72.2, the cabinet shall consist of the prime minister and not less than eight other ministers of whom one shall be the attorney general. As many as may be appointed in accordance with the provisions of Article 73 of this Constitution. And we note here that Article 72 is an entrenched provision and 
to change Article 72 and uh, establish an upper limit for the number of ministers. It is required. It requires a vote of not less than three quarters of all members of both houses. And thereafter, it requires a referendum with a majority vote of the electors. In the interest of transparency and accountability, this should be an amendment establishing an upper limit for the appointment of ministers to eliminate the supersized cabinets that we've seen over the past decades. I recommend that combine the size of the parliament of the cabinet, inclusive of parliamentary secretaries, should not exceed a limit of 17 or 43% or of the elected members of parliament. As long as the status quo remains, it will demonstrate our lack of commitment to the ideals of accountability and transparency. In addition, I have noted with interest the tendency to think that the cabinet office through the attorney general should be the sole legal advisor to the parliament. I see this as an adulterous relationship that is forbidden by the very concept of the separation of powers and the tenets of Westminster. The Attorney General is a member of, and legal advisor to the executive branch of the government. In adherence to the doctrine of the separation of powers and the conventions of Westminster, the Attorney General cannot and must not directly be involved in the affairs of the legislature and the judicial branches of government. The British, confronted with this controversial overreaching tendency of Lord Chancellor Derry Irvin, remedied this problem in 2003 by removing the Lord Chancellor from office with a plan to abolish that office. Let me hasten to add right here that I am not suggesting that the Attorney General be removed or that his office be abolished. In this regard, according to my research, the plan to abolish the office was later abandoned, though it was partially reformed in the Constitutional Reform Act of 2005 in England, and is now used as a secondary title to the Secretary of State for Justice. In this vein, and in addition to any legal advice operated, um, offered by the Crown, I have sought to find wisdom in many counsel by speaking with and receiving the agreement of the following eminent jurists to provide independent legal advice to the Speaker and the legislative branch of government. I have spoken with and received the agreement of Dame June Sawyer, former Chief Justice and President of the Court of Appeal. Attorney Fred Smith, QC. Attorney Maurice Glendon, QC. Attorney O.B. Ferguson, Jr., President of the Trade Union Congress, and a recognized precedent-setting attorney before Her Majesty's Privy Council. Attorney Kelphine Cunningham, former Register General and Vice President of the Bahamas Industrial Tribunal, and Mr. Khalil Parker, the President of the Bahamas Bar Association. The Constitution, in Article 46.1, establishes a minimum of 38 members of Parliament, while Article 72 establishes a minimum of 8 ministers. And the question is, if that being the case, why over the years have we permitted this circumstance to occur? Why have we almost tripled the minimum number of cabinet ministers while we have only one seat above the constitutional minimum of 38? How can there be accountability and transparency when the cabinet outnumbers the backbench and the official opposition combined? Why would a house of 39 members have 20 elected members as cabinet ministers and parliamentary secretaries 
when the House of Commons, with 650 members, have under 30 cabinet ministers. Why is the cabinet office size seized? Rather, why is the cabinet office seized with the administrative and budgetary control of parliament when the principles of Westminster absolutely condemns the idea of any individual or branch of government functioning in more than one branch of government simultaneously? As a former chief meteorologist, I understand that the weather conditions can change as a consequence of certain circumstances. And I believe it will get cold soon. As a former meteorologist, you would then pardon me if I employ some of the language of the trade. I expect atmospheric conditions against this particular intervention to change. But before you make determinations as to what position you will take, I urge you in the interest of, the, of this wonderful country that we all love to please reflect deeply on what I have said today. My position is not mine alone. It is deeply rooted in the Westminster system of parliamentary democracy. And interestingly, it is deeply rooted in all established democracies. The Bahamas, as we've seen today earlier, have produced great Olympic champions competing on an even playing field with the greatest powers on earth. I have no doubt that we can govern our country with much democratic ideal as other nations on this earth. Having said that, I have and forecast colder days and a penetrating chill factor as I move on by faith in this part of impartiality and neutrality. But I understand as a former chief meteorologist that whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, whether the weather be fine or whether the weather be not, we must weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. Prime Minister, in his tribute to the Chief Justice, Kendall uh, Stephen Isaacs, has raised fundamental issues of democracy, the separation of governmental powers, and the independence of the three branches of government. The time is right at this time to ask the question whether the current state of affairs are reflective of the highest functioning of Westminster system of government, governance. If the answer is no, and I strongly suggest that it is no, then why be silent about it? We are honestly and sincerely about the advancement of this nation that we love and about the people that we represent, then I suggest that we need to holler, but not throw up both our hands. It's time to recognize the reasons for the Ten Commandments and adhere to the postulations of Thomas Hobbes. Our refusal of failure to initiate this fundamental law to establish an independent parliamentary service commission will categorize us as pretenders and our words will ring loud in hollow emptiness. Thank you, honorable members. Now we proceed along the order of business. Introduction and swearing in of new members. Laying of documents by ministers.
The chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Kalani. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Oh. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the house a copy of the following. The Antiquities Monuments and Museum Corporation National Museum of the Bahamas. How did that document be brought up? that the document rely on the table for the laying of documents by ministers yeah. Yeah, thank you very much Mr. Speaker Mr. Speaker as the member of finance is not present I lay his documents on the table here in his absence the bag leave there on the table house a copy of the following a the industries encouragement approved product masters marine shipyard limited order 2018 Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Quedo. Laying of documents by ministers. Beg leave lay on the table of the house a copy of the following. Industries Encouragement Approved Manufacturer Masters Marine Shipyard Limited. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. The Industries Encouragement Approved Manufacturer Masters Marine Shipyard Limited Order 2018. Order that the document be brought up. that the document do lie on the table. Where the laying of documents by ministers? I leave lay on the table of the house a copy of the following. The industries encouragement proof product, Junior Cigarette and Tobacco Company Limited, order 2018. Order that the document be brought up. that the document will lie on the table. For the laying of documents by ministers. I leave lay on the table of the house a copy of the following. The Industries Encouragement Approved Manufacturer Junior Cigarette and Tobacco Company Limited Order 2018. Order that the document be brought up. that the document will lie on the table. Where the laying of documents by ministers? Peg leave lay on the table of the house the copy of the following. Immigration fees amendment number two, regulation 2018. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document will lie on the table. For the laying of documents by ministers. The egg leaves lay on the table of the house the property the following. The Bahamas Financial Services Board, BFSB, financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2017. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. For the laying of documents by ministers, the chair recognizes the honorable member for East Grand Bahama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the automatic exchange of financial account information amendment regulations 2018. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of document by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for each Grand Bahama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Travelers' Currency Declaration Act 2015, appointed day notice 2018. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document will lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Public Holidays Emancipation Day 2018, opening of shop notice 2018. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document will lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Bahamas Registered Stock Directions 2018, Bahamas Registered Stocks 2021, 2028, and 2038. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the House the Bahamas Registered Stock Directions 2018, Bahamas Registered Stock Number 2, 2021, 2028, and 2030. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the House the Bahamas, sorry, the Deposit Insurance Corporation Annual Report and Financial Statements for the year ended 31st December 2017. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Carmichael. Please, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on house a copy of the Great Authority audit financial statement for the end of December 31st, 2017. Thank you. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. If it pleases you, Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the Consumer Protection Commission Annual Report 2017-2018 and audited financial statement the 31st of March 2018. Order that the document be brought up. that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the house a copy of the following Antiquities Monument and Museum Corporation, National Museum of the Bahamas, 2014. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Freetown. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the house a copy of the following. The Gaming House Operator Amendment Regulations 2018. Order that the document be brought up.
order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes honorable member for Southern Shores. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Forestry Amendment Act Regulation Story 2018. Thank you, honorable member. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Le further laying of documents by ministers. Chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. There are none, Mr. Speaker. Statements and communications by ministers. None, Mr. Speaker. Communications by the clerk. Messages from the Governor General. <laughs> Messages from the Senate. Motions for leave of absence, leave to resign seat, and new writ. Presentation of petitions. Presentation of reports of committees. Adoption of reports of committees. Voice reading of bills. Um, correct. Um, the chair recognizes the honorable member for South Beach. Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to introduce and have read for the first time a bill for an act to incorporate the Bahamas Baptist Missionary and Educational Convention in the Bahamas. Is this second? Second it. It has been moved and seconded that the following bill be read for the first time. The Bahamas Baptist Missionary, Missionary and Educational Convention Incorporated Bill 2018. As many as in favor will remain seated. Those who oppose will stand. Order that the bill be read for the first time. Bill for an act to incorporate the Bahamas Baptist Missionary and Educational Convention in the Bahamas. Point of first reading of bills. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to introduce and have read for the first time a bill for an act to amend the Road Traffic Act to require the payment of outstanding fines in respect of traffic offenses before the grant of a driver's license to require the immediate production of a certificate of insurance, driver's license, upon the request of a police officer, and to prohibit the use of electronic communication devices while driving. Is this second now? Second. Um, Mr. Graham. It, it has been, honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the following bill be read for a first time. A bill for an act to amend the Road Traffic Act to require the payment of outstanding fines in respect of traffic offenses before the grant of a driver's license to require the immediate production of a certificate of insurance driving license upon the request of a police officer and to prohibit the use of electronic communication devices while driving. As many as in favor will remain seated. Those who oppose will stand. Order that the bill be read for the first time. <coughs> A 
bill for an act to amend the Road Traffic Act to require the payment of outstanding fees in respect of traffic offences before the grant of a driver's driving licence, to require the immediate production of a certificate of insurance, driving licence upon the request for a police officer, and to prohibit the use of electronic communication devices while driving. Play the police reading of bills. The chair recognizes the honorable member for East Grand Bahama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to introduce and read for the first time, have read for the first time, a bill for an act to establish the principles and procedures of responsible fiscal management and to facilitate effective parliamentary and public scrutiny of the fiscal performance of the government. Mr. Mr. Speaker, this is a bill that has been widely cons consulted uh, with the, the public society, uh, civil society, and one that we look forward to as a, an effective tool, as foreshadowed during the budget debate, uh, that will help us to grasp hold of our, of our fiscal uh, um, state of the, of, the, of, the, of the country. And so it's a great pleasure that I lay this bill today as a, as a very advanced cutting piece of legislation that will help us. Is there a second though? Is there a second though? Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded <laughs> that the following bill be read for first time. A bill for an act to establish the principles and procedures of responsible fiscal management and to facilitate effective parliamentary and public scrutiny of the fiscal performance of the government. As many as in favor will remain seated, those who oppose will stand. Order that the bill be read for the first time. A bill for an act to establish the principles and procedure of responsible fiscal management and to facilitate effective parliamentary and public scrutiny of the fiscal performance of the government. Further, first reading of bills. There are no more for the first reading, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Second reading and committal of bills. None at this time, Mr. Speaker. Committee of the whole House. Third reading and passing of bills. Consideration of Senate amendments. Resolutions. Members' statements. Appointment of select committees. Instructions to select committees. Discharge of select committees. Notices for future meetings. The chair recognizes the honorable member for East Grand Bahama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to give notice to the House that I intend to uh, read and have debated uh, the following resolution at the next sitting of the House. And the resolution is, whereas by Section 18 of the Financial Administration and Audit Act, 2010, it is provided that no loans shall be raised by the government and no guarantee involving a financial liability shall be binding upon the government unless entered into with the prior approval of the House of Assembly, signified by resolution thereof. And whereas the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the government, on the 27th day of July 2018, incorporated Lucayan Renewal Holding Limited, Limited under the Companies Act 2000, Chapter 308, statute law of the Bahamas as a special purpose vehicle company or SPV beneficially owned by the government for the purpose of acquiring certain hotel properties located on the island of Grand Bahama which the government has decided to purchase in the public's interest and whereas pursuant to that intention Lucayan Renewal Holding Limited the purchaser executed a sales purchase agreement the SPA on the 15th of August 2018, 
with Hutchison Lucaya Limited and Bahama Reef Limited, the vendors, for the purchase of certain parcels of land and improvements and chateaus, chateaus thereon, comprising the Grand Lucayan Hotel, the properties, on the terms set out in the SPA attached hereto as Appendix 1, and whereas the purchase price for the properties is $65 million, which, is, which in accordance with the terms of the SPA is to be paid as follows, A, a deposit of $10 million, which was due and paid upon execution of the SPA, B, an additional sum of $20 million, which was due and pay, paid upon the completion date, as such term is defined in the SBA, and C, the balance of the purchase price in the sum of $35 million, the loan, to be secured by first demand legal mortgage over the properties, the mortgage, payable by seven tranches of bonds of $5 million, each issued by the purchaser in favor of the vendors with interest thereon payable quarterly at the rate of 4% per annum and with each tranche maturing in consecutive six months periods after the completion date with the first tranche maturing on the expiry of six months after the completion date and guaranteed, guaranteed by the government. And whereas the government has financed the initial $30 million of the purchase price by an advance from the contingency fund authorized by the Minister of Finance pursuant to Article 133 of the Constitution and Section 10 of the Financial Administration Noted Act, and in respect of which a supplementary estimate of the sums required to replace the advance shall be laid before the House as soon as practicable in a supplementary appropriation bill or a final appropriation bill to be voted on by the House, and whereas the government proposes to guarantee the loan to Lucayan Renewal Holdings Limited in the sum of $35 million from the vendors to pay the balance of the purchase price and to guarantee the said loan upon the terms and conditions set forth in the guarantee attached hereto as Appendix 2. Now therefore be it resolved that this House, one, authorizes the government of the Bahamas to guarantee the loan to Lucayan Renewal Holdings Limited in the sum of $35 million for the purpose of paying the balance of the purchase price of the properties pursuant to the SPA. Two, authorizes the Treasurer on behalf of the Government of the Bahamas to execute the guarantee attached hereto as Appendix 2. Mr. Speaker, in, in giving notice of this resolution, I want to first say how very seriously the Government of the Bahamas has taken its obligation to the to fiscal finances in the first instance, but more importantly in this juncture to the overall economy of the Bahamas. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister, the member for Kalani, sorry, I'm laying the bill and the resolution. I'm just making a few comments. The the resolution, sorry, Mr. Speaker, the, the member for Kalani has said often and I believe the opposition would not disagree that the health and strength of the Grand Bahama economy is vital to the overall growth of the economy of the Bahamas. As such, it would be irresponsible for any government to ignore the plight of that economy and its major economic drivers. There is no doubt that the Grand Lucayan is a significant factor in the future of the eco economy of Grand Bahama. Despite or notwithstanding its 400, 450 employees, attached to that property are a number of ancillary, small and medium-sized businesses, individuals who derive their economic uh, livelihood as a result of that property. Not only are we talking about the straw vendors across the street, the Lucayan marketplace, not are we talking about the taxi drivers, uh, the wood carvers and all of the artisans that practice from that place. We are not only talking about the cruise ships that arrive uh, daily uh, that provide guests and visitors to that property. But we're talking about restaurants, we're talking about the average Grand Bahamian who depend 
upon this institute, this, this entity, for economic activity. Mr. Speaker, I listened to a lot of the commentary by those who may not understand what drives the economy in Grand Bahama. Uh, uh, I am laying a resolution. Uh, 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 Calm down. You got your chance. Uh, uh, honorable member. Mr. Speaker. Uh, um, uh, honorable honorable member for East Grand Bahama. Just a moment. Um, are you on a are you on a point of order, Cat Island? Yes, sir. Um, what is the um, point? Of, what is the point of order? On the agenda, this is the agenda for communication. Mm -hmm. if, if the government wished to have given a communication respect for what they intended to do, that was the time to do it. They're past that. He's now they're giving a communication and he's supposed to be laying the resolution. Not yes. speaking to the resolution. Yes, honorable honorable member. Um okay, uh, uh, the, the point the point was well taken. Um, you're laying, yes, Mr. and, and we, we need a member from the government to adopt Mr. the, Speaker, the, the I, resolution. I, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and I'm so guided. Um, the the only reason for me to give the commentary is to ensure that the the opposition has the correct context in which to to to, to form their debate, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, because I'm sure they want to be relevant to the issue. But, Mr. Speaker, being that as it may, I take your guidance. I, I will only say, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> that that this is a vital piece of, 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 of resolution to the vitality of the economy of Grand Bahama, and I lay it with the greatest of pride uh, for the benefit of the, the people of Grand Bahama. And I want to recognize, as I seek, Mr. Said, Mr. Speaker, the present presence and the support of the unions that represent the workers at that entity. Uh, the, And Mr. and Mr. Speaker, it is noteworthy that we do not only have the line staff workers union, but we also have the management union represented here today in support of this, of this resolution. And so, Mr. Speaker, I take your, your leave, your guidance, and I, I, I lay this bill. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable, honorable members. Uh, is there a second to uh, for the adoption? A second. Oh. Or, or is that the, the resolution do lie on the table? <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 honorable member for Cat Island, the chair recognizes honorable member for Cat Island on the <laughs> Uh, the member from East Grand Bahama. The did not listen to the communication of the executive and the encroachment and overreaching from the end of the legislature. That's what I was attempting to, to bring the member mind to. This is what you were telling us. I'm sick. Are you doing? I, I, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not sick. I'm not doing the speaker's job. I'm just. And I, because otherwise, the speaker, I should have something which I ought to be able to respond to what he has to say. Uh, uh, equal time. Equal time. Thank you, honourable members. Further, further notices for future meetings. And the, the chair recognizes the honourable member for Sandville. The honourable member much. for Sandville was on his feet first. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I would. Um, just like to renew a notice that's standing in my name to investigate all matters relative to natural resources of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas above, on, or below the terrain or the sea to identify the sources of the natural resources that contribute to the Sovereign Wealth Fund as well as entities historical and current engage in extraction, identify areas of disbursement recommend to the Parliament mechanisms to enhance accountability and transparency in awarding contracts for exploration and extraction and receipt of this uh, on, Honorable Member, and to, go on. Um, I, I'm being as generous as I could yeah, be today. I mean, uh, it, it, when giving the notice, there's no need to read okay. the, the complete well, I, notice. I'd just like to renew. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Where the notices? For future meeting, the chair recognizes the honorable member for Mango P, South and Central Land. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I too would like to commend you for your presentation this morning. I think it touched both sides. 
we've got to be careful going forward. And I'd like to note the fact, Mr. Speaker, that you're not the first speaker, I've been around the while to raise those comments. But I think you brought more life with them very directly, and I respect the Hattie Forest for today. Um, I also hope that with the unions being here, that I want them to understand, not to leave here with a, a misconstrued notion that we decide on the side, don't understand the fight of crime, but how I must say that. And we look forward to the decision, for, for the discussion, very shortly, so we can also make our case on this side. Mr. Speaker, against that backdrop, all notices laid in the name of Majesty's loyal opposition still remain. Thank you very much. Mayor. Thank you, much, Honorable Member. Quite a notice. <laughs> Notice of for future meetings. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Bamboo Town. Mr. Speaker, I take this opportunity to renew all matters in the name of the government and do move that the House adjourns until tomorrow, Thursday, the 20th of September at 10 a.m. Second that, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is, Honorable Members, it has been moved and seconded that the business of this House do adjourn to 10 a.m. tomorrow morning the 20th of September. As many as are in favor will remain seated. Uh, I, 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 yes. Did you recognize the Honorable Member for yeah. Cat Island, Rum Kings, and Salvador? Mr. Speaker, uh, I just wish to say that it was last week, Tuesday, that the Member that the leader of government sought consent from the opposition to debate this resolution today. That consent readily given to the opposition today. That was last week. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it was conditioned upon. I didn't speak to the member from East Pine, Baham. I spoke to Bamboo Town. In Bamboo Town, I said to them, we're prepared to do it because we understand what they intend to want to do. I said, but we would wish to have the resolution and those matters pertaining to this transaction so that we could have an intelligent contribution to the debate that was pursuing. They sent to us the resolution. The resolution indicated that the agreement for sale would have been attached. It was not attached, the one that was sent to us. We asked for it over and over, repeatedly, because we wanted to facilitate the other day today. Uh, around what? 8, 8, 8, 7, 30 last night, there's a voicemail about you have to, maybe we think you might have to speak to the Attorney General about getting it. And now we I mean Mr. Speaker and, and today we're now getting the agreement to sit. And they want very wishes to come back tomorrow. Right? Mr Speaker Well maybe that's maybe maybe that's why we're here, eh? Maybe that's why we're here. That's maybe that's why we're here. Mr Speaker, I also um, as a result of the absence of the agreement being attached to to the uh, to the resolution, I wrote to the Prime Minister because there were some other matters I saw that would assist us in informing the debate, to which I've had no response. Right. Mr. Speaker, I w I would. Uh, to, to, give, to give us this agreement now and to expect us to come tomorrow and be intelligently in reject, right? right? No, my, my, I don't pinch me, right? But it's just... Let's make, so, Mr. Speaker, um, I was urging the government to consider until Monday, Monday morning, so we can come in and deal with the matter. So that we could be able to properly assess the agreement of sale and deal with it. So you should have sent it? You should have sent it? That's that's it. All I'm saying is if they, they should have sent the document to us when we asked for it. If they provided it to us, when you said we wouldn't have this issue today. We would not have had this issue today. Uh, uh, Honorable, 
they, they give it to us today and expect us to come tomorrow. Today. Right. Here. Uh, honorable member, the chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. Mr. Speaker, we, we hear the concerns of the leader of the opposition. We did send a resolution. We did seek their consent for the debate. And Mr. Speaker, much of what is needed for this debate is already in the public domain. And so at the end of the day, the government is on a timeline. We are purpose to have done this today. We're not going to have this debate on this resolution today. So we will debate it tomorrow. The opposition have an opportunity to look at the sales agreement tonight and to develop their arguments for us tomorrow morning. We will come back tomorrow morning as has been moved and we will have that debate this week. Honorable, honorable members. Speaker. It does. Just talk. Honorable members, it, it has been moved and seconded <laughs> that this business of this house do adjourn to 10 a.m. tomorrow morning at... Honorable members, the chair is speaking. Adjourn to 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. As many as in favor will remain seated. Those who oppose will stand. Final adjournment. Please move for final adjournment. Yeah. 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 And we're beyond that now, remember. We're beyond the motion, though. Honorable member, we, we are beyond that. We are at final adjournment now. Final adjournment. Do not move that the House adjourns. It, it has been moved and seconded that the House of the business of this House do adjourn to 10 a.m. on 20th of September 2018. Order that the business of this house, this house now stands adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, the 28th of September, 2018.